In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get an API call into Power BI with either an API that doesn't need an API key and also an API that does need an API key. So with that in mind, let's first head over to my browser. So if you want to follow along, I have both links to the places where I'm going to be using. The one that doesn't have the API key is going to be called Give Food, which covers all the food banks that are in the UK and use read.co.uk, which is a job searching site, to be able to pull job search data that you also need an API key for. So first, let's start with Give Food. Now, if you head over to the link that I provided, but also the link is provided up here if you just want to grab it. Within here, this is where you get to see the different API URLs that you will need to be able to do that call. Now, all these will be in JSON, although saying that you can select different format, but I'm going to be doing everything in JSON because Power BI recognizes that and does all the legwork for you. So what we want to do is look at what food bank locations there are. We can then see in the documentation what you can pull from this API. It's very important that you do read the documentation whenever you use any API, just so you can get an understanding of how you need to pull the information and also if you need an API key. In this case, you do not. So all you want to do is just double check what the fields are, what you can pull, but then also nicely, they lay out what the JSON will look like. So you can see this particular place is called Redline Project. That's their phone number, the email address, longitude and latitude, see where the position, so you can map it. Then also the link to their website. And then also it gives you what their political party is and the information there. And then we've got the next one along here. So we know that's the format that we're going to have. So what we can do, we can go up to here. It's already given us what the URL is. So what we do is just highlight, copy, and then what you can do is just click on and then go in. And then it gives you the same result because you're basically seeing what it looks like within the web. So if we head over to my Power BI desktop, so we can just copy in that link as a request via the web option under get data. So if you click on that, cause you can just access it just by you could just using that web link, then what you can do is very easily just paste in the link like so, and then do okay. And then once that's loaded up, you'll see all the data nicely formatted, all ready for you to use in a table format because good old Power BI has done all the legwork. So if we just scroll along and just check the data, we can see all the different parts here. We can see there's some errors under here for the phone number. And that's probably because there might be two numbers incorporated in one, meaning it doesn't look like a number because it's got maybe text in it. That's probably what's causing the problem. But then you can go through and then clean up the data as you need to. As I mentioned, you've got the longitude and latitude, so you can break that out to be able to actually see where they position on a map. And then also you've got their website, which you can access to. And then when this particular bit of information was created within the API, the team that created it did it. So if we have a look back at the different parts, we can go to the source and we can see all it's done is done a web call and then it's pulled all the records. Then Power BI is then converted to a table. Then it would have expanded to columns, which we've got here. And then that's where we can see all the parts and the information. But then there'll be other parts that need to be expanded within the table, which you can see the records here. It's expanded the URLs, the charity the, and the politics URL, and then just change the type, to get the format that it believes is the correct one. So if we just close and apply, we can go to our query table and then we can see all the data has been loaded in all nicely and ready to use. So now I've shown you how easy it is just to get an API get call when you didn't need an API key. And now I'm going to show you how to do it when you do need an API key. So if we move back over to my browser, we can see under the read.co.uk documentation for their API, they require to sign up for their API key. So what you can do is just go in and all you need to do is put your first name, last name, and then your email, and then they'll email you your API key. So within here, we can see all the different parts that we can get from this API. We can see employer ID, which would be the employer, and then keywords, location name, and possible max min salaries if they have them, if it's temp, perm, etc. And then also you've got the distance from location. 
Now, if you scroll down, they give you an example that you can use and it shows you the structure of how to actually do an API search. So if we go on the basis of what they've got here, but we wanted to change that information. So in this case, they've got accountant, but let's change it to analyst and then location to stick to London. Let's remove the employer ID because we don't know the IDs for the different employers at the moment. So we want to pull everything and then distance from location. Let's keep it as 15. So if we just copy and paste this and then put this in, when you press return, you get the thing about signing in. Now, if you're wondering, oh, what well, is my username? That is what your API key is. So all you need to do is go head over to your email, grab your API key and stick it in here. So in my case, I've got it here ready and I'm just going to paste it in and then sign in. So now we get a result. So as I mentioned, I'm just going to make some changes to this API call. So we want to get rid of the employer. So we get rid of it there. And then that's shown you all the different accountants that are in London within 15 mile radius. Now, if we change accountant to analyst, and because this is a keyword, it's showing you anything within that job post and it says analyst. So they could say analyst in the job title, or it might be a different job title, but have analyst within the actual job spec. So what we want to do now is if we take with what we're happy with, copy that. And then if we head back over to Power BI, go to our web, paste in what we've just taken from the web, do OK, and then you'll be asked to log in. All you need to do is go to basic. And then as before, we need to select for our username, our API key. So we paste that in and then do connect. So because this hasn't sorted out the table automatically for you, we'll need to just do a few little transformations just to get the data we need. So first things first, what we want to do is open up where it says results by clicking on there and expand to new rows. And then if you expand the results, you can then see all the columns of all the data we're going to get. And then if you just do, don't use original column name because that will then make it really long and you don't want results dot whatever the name is. And you don't want to have a really long name or have to sit there and rename everything. So ensure that's ticked off and then do okay. And now you have all your data that you've just got from that API call. So we have a look at our data. We can see the employer name, which is a mixture of, of actual companies, but also looks like recruitment agencies. I can see a few there. And also you've got your job title, where the location is. I'm not quite sure how they think Manchester is within 15 <laughs> miles of London. It's definitely not within 15 miles of London. And then you've got your max salary, your min salary, the currency, when the job posting will expire, the date it was posted, the job description, the URL, and how many applications have been made. Then we have the option to see more locations, but in this case, I'm fairly happy with what we've got, so we can just remove that. And then it gives you the total results at the end. Again, don't need that one. And then we can save this with a proper name. So let's just call this job search analyst and then close and apply so now that's loaded in we can go and check the data and then we can see as we had before we had the employer name job title all the information ready to analyze and then one thing to add the great thing about using an api is that you're able to make as many calls as you please but only until a point because when you read the documentation, there may be a fair usage. And also there might be limitations, especially if you have an API key, they might limit how many calls you can do within say an hour, a day, a month. So just be aware, if you want something to be refreshing every 10 minutes, that might not be possible, but it's always best just to check the documentation to see that you're not gonna be overusing the API and then get your access removed. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that like button because then that pushes it out to more people. And obviously don't forget to subscribe so you can get notified when I release any more videos to carry on your analytical journey. But if you want to carry on your analytical journey now, check out these videos over here. And as always, until next time.